Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Great Books in 10 Minutes. By the end of this episode, you will learn everything about the first story in the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes series by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, A Scandal in Bohemia. Before we start, if you have been getting value out of this channel and you would like to support me in creating more content and adding more books to this channel, you can now become a member by clicking on the join button. You could also use Venmo or buy me a coffee directly from the links in the description box. Thank you very much. Arthur Conan Doyle's The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes is a timeless collection of short stories featuring the iconic detective Sherlock Holmes and his loyal friend and chronicler Dr. John Watson. First published in 1892, the stories have been adapted into countless films, TV series, and stage productions, with the character of Sherlock Holmes becoming a symbol of deductive reasoning and logic. One of the major strengths of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes is the intricate characterization of its two protagonists, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Holmes is depicted as an eccentric genius. His cold, analytical demeanor is balanced by Dr. Watson's warm and compassionate nature, making the duo a complementary and engaging team. Through their interactions, readers get to know Holmes and Watson not just as crime-solving partners, but also as friends whose contrasting personalities create a dynamic and creative relationship. The 12 short stories that make up the adventures of Sherlock Holmes offer a diverse range of cases. Each story is unique and Doyle skillfully constructs intricate and engaging plots that keep readers guessing until the very end. The wide variety of cases allows readers to witness Holmes' method and expertise in different contexts, making each story a fresh and exciting experience. Doyle's vivid and detailed descriptions of Victorian London add depth and richness to the stories. The bustling streets, foggy alleys, and opulent drawing rooms create an evocative backdrop against which Sherlock's and Watson's adventures unfold. This atmospheric setting immerses readers in the world of Sherlock Holmes, making the stories not only an intellectual exercise, but also a sensory experience. The main themes of A Scandal in Bohemia are desire, duty, femininity, love, observation, and rivalry. The story of a scandal in Bohemia starts with Dr. Watson, Sherlock Holmes' friend and assistant, revealing that Sherlock Holmes viewed a certain woman as superior to all others and always referred to her as the woman. Although he had no romantic feelings towards her or any other person due to his belief that emotions were detestable, he held her in high regard. Holmes never spoke of softer passions and considered himself a machine for reasoning and observing. Any intrusion of emotions into his temperament might lead to doubts about his mental results. But despite that cold and precise nature, Irene Adler, a woman with a questionable past, was the only woman who held any significance for him. Dr. Watson had not seen much of Sherlock Holmes lately, as he had been preoccupied with his own life after getting married. While Watson was content with his home-centered interests, Sherlock detested society and remained in their lodging in Baker Street, surrounded by books. Despite his vices, Holmes remained committed to studying crime and solving cases that police had given up on. Beyond occasional vague accounts of his activity in the daily press, Watson had little update about his former friend and companion's life. One night in March 1888, Dr. Watson was passing through Baker Street and felt a strong urge to see Sherlock Holmes. As he looked up, he noticed that the rooms were brightly lit and saw Holmes pacing eagerly with his head down and his hands clasped behind his back. Watson could tell that Holmes was working on a new problem. After ringing the bell, Sherlock welcomed Watson kindly and gestured for him to sit down. With few words exchanged, Holmes offered him a cigar before standing by the fire and examining Watson introspectively. Sherlock Holmes observed that Dr. Watson had been stuck in the rain lately and had hired a clumsy and careless servant girl. Watson was amazed by how Holmes knew that and asked for an explanation. Holmes revealed that he saw six parallel cuts on the inside of Watson's left shoe, indicating that someone had carelessly scraped around the edges of the sole to remove crusted mud. 
from which he deduced that Watson must have been stuck in mud. Sherlock then explained that there is a difference between seeing and observing, and used the example of the steps leading to the room they were in to explain that observation was just as important as seeing, and asked Watson if he knew how many steps there were. Watson replied that he had seen the steps countless times, but he had never counted them. Sherlock answered that he knew that there were 17 steps because he had both seen and observed them. Holmes then showed Watson a note that had no date, signature, or address, which had arrived by the last post, and asked his friend to read it aloud. The note stated that considering Sherlock's recent case regarding the Dutch royal family, he will be well suited to take on the case of the letter's anonymous author. Therefore, an unknown gentleman would visit Holmes that night to consult him on a matter of great importance. The message also suggested that the visitor might be wearing a mask, adding to the mystery. Watson asked for Holmes' opinion on the note, but Holmes replied that he had no data yet, warning that it was a mistake to theorize before gathering enough information. Dr. Watson tried to imitate Holmes's deduction process and observed that the paper was expensive and well-made, suggesting that the writer was indeed a rich person. Holmes noticed that the note was written on a paper that was not of English origin and asked Watson to examine it. Watson saw letters E, G, and P woven into the texture of the paper. Holmes pointed out that the letters were not a monogram, but a customary contraction in German. Holmes searched his continental gazetteer and found that Egria, where the paper was made, was in Bohemia, a German-speaking country known for its glass factories and paper mills. Sherlock was thrilled by this revelation and puffed up a triumphant cloud of smoke from his cigarette. Upon further thinking, Holmes came to the conclusion that the man who wrote the note is a German due to the peculiar construction of the sentence. Suddenly, they heard the sound of horses' hooves followed by a sharp pull on the doorbell. Sherlock glanced out of the window and observed that a luxury carriage dragged by two expensive horses had stopped by his apartment building. Excited by the prospect of the case, Sherlock told Watson that there must be good money in it. Watson suggested leaving, but Holmes insisted that he stays and gives him his best observation. A few moments later, a tall and muscular man entered the room. He was dressed in attire that could be considered gaudy and tasteless in England. He wore a black mask covering the upper part of his face and held a broad-brimmed hat. Upon entering the room, the stranger inquired if they were received his note and asked for Sherlock Holmes. Holmes invited the stranger to sit and asked for his name. The stranger introduced himself as Count von Kram and asked if Dr. Watson was trustworthy. After receiving reassurance from Sherlock, the Count requested they swear to secrecy for two years and mentioned the matter at hand could affect European history. Holmes and Watson agreed to keep everything confidential. The stranger then apologized for his mask explaining that his employer wanted his identity to remain unknown. He also admitted that the title he gave himself was not his own. Then he revealed that the matter that he wanted to discuss was of great delicacy and involved the royal house of Bohemia. In a surprising move, Sherlock addressed the stranger as your majesty and told him that he already knew who he was and where he had come from. Hearing Sherlock's words, the man stood up from his chair, paced nervously around the room, and then tore off his mask and revealed himself to be the king of Bohemia. The king explained that he was not accustomed to doing such business in his own person, but the matter was so important that he could not confine it to an agent without putting himself in danger. The king explained that he had met a well-known adventurous and an eccentric woman named Irene Adler during a long visit to Warsaw about five years ago. He told Holmes that during his relationship with Irene Adler, he had written her some compromising letters, and now that he wanted to get the letters back, she would not return them to him. Holmes asked the king how the authenticity of the letters could be proven if they were to be used for blackmail. And the king explained that the letters were written on his private notepaper. Holmes replied that they could claim they were stolen. The king added that the letters bore his royal seal. Holmes answered that they could claim the seal was imitated. The king then revealed that Irene had a photograph of them together as well. Hearing that, Sherlock agreed that it was indeed a big problem and asked the king why he had not tried to bribe Miss Adler and get the photo back or hire professional thieves to steal it for him. 
The king revealed that despite sending thieves and agents, they were unsuccessful in finding it. The woman, Irene Adler, refused to sell it to him and was threatening to ruin him by sending it to the family of the princess of Scandinavia, with whom the king was planning to get married. Holmes asked the king how he could be sure that Irene had not already sent the photograph to her fiancé's family. The king replied that she had threatened him to send it on the day that their engagement was going to be announced publicly, which would be in three days. The king gave Sherlock full authority to pursue the matter on his behalf and after paying him £1,000 and giving him Miss Adler's address, left. Sherlock asked Watson to visit him tomorrow at 3 p.m. The next day at 3 o'clock, Watson returned to Baker Street, but Holmes had not yet returned. He waited inside by the fire and an hour later suddenly a messy-looking drunken groom entered the room. Watson, who was familiar with Sherlock's mastery of disguise, stared at the man for a few moments and realized it was indeed his friend. Sherlock went inside his bedroom and a few minutes later emerged as his own well-dressed self. Sherlock informed Watson that he spent his morning in an unusual manner. He disguised himself as a groom out of work and went to Bryony Lodge where Irene Adler lived. After observing the villa, he helped some ostlers with their horses and in exchange he received information about Miss Adler and other people in the neighborhood. Holmes told Watson about Irene Adler who was the talk of the town and had turned all the men's heads. She lived quietly, sang at concerts, and had one male visitor, Mr. Godfrey Norton, who visited her once or twice a day. Holmes wondered about the significance of Irene Adler's relationship with Godfrey Norton, who was a lawyer. He pondered whether she might have transferred the photograph to him if she was her client. Sherlock then considered whether to continue investigating at Bryony Lodge or to focus on Norton. Sherlock continued that as he was waiting outside the Bryony Lodge, a man whom he believed could have been Godfrey Norton had arrived at the place in a hurry. Holmes caught glimpses of him pacing and talking excitingly in the sitting room. Thirty minutes later, he left the house looking agitated. He pulled out a gold watch and instructed the cab driver to take him to the church. Holmes continued that right after the man's exit, another couch left the house and inside it, a beautiful woman asked her driver to hurry and take her to the church. Sherlock continued that he immediately got into another cab and followed the woman. Once at the church, he idly wandered inside and saw the two standing in front of the altar with the priest. Upon noticing him, Godfrey asked him to join them for a few minutes. At the church, Holmes found out that Godfrey Norton and Irene Adler were about to get married. As there was an informality about their license, the clergyman refused to marry them without a witness. Upon seeing him, Godfrey had asked Holmes to join them, and Sherlock found himself being dragged to the altar and mumbling responses as a witness. The marriage was done quickly, and the bride had thanked him with a sovereign, which Holmes planned to wear on his watch chain as a memento of the occasion. Sherlock then informed Watson that he required his cooperation and asked if he was willing to break the law and take the risk of arrest. Watson agreed and Holmes explained that they had to meet with Irene Adler at Bryony Lodge in two hours. Holmes revealed that he had already arranged the plan of action and insisted that Watson must not interfere. He instructed Watson to stand close to the sitting room window and wait for Sherlock to raise his hand. Once he did that, Watson must throw a smoke grenade inside the room and and scream fire, then leave and meet his friend at the end of the street. Next, Sherlock Holmes disguised himself as a clergyman and they left for Miss Adler's house. On their way, Holmes and Watson discussed how the marriage between Irene Adler and Godfrey Norton complicated their search for the photograph. Sherlock thought that Irene was unlikely to have carried the photo with her all the time due to its size and the risk of being searched. He continued that it was more likely that Adler would have kept it in her own house since she had planned to use it soon. Watson wondered if the photo was in her house. How come the king's men could not find it? Sherlock replied that they did not know where to look. Watson asked where Sherlock would look. Sherlock answered that he would not look for it, but he would make Miss Adler show it to him herself. After a few minutes of waiting outside the Bryony Lodge, Miss Adler's carriage arrived and following that, a fight broke out between the beggars at the street over opening the door of the carriage for her and earning a reward. Holmes, who was dressed as a priest, joined in to protect the woman, but he immediately fell on the ground and suddenly blood ran all over his face. Seeing that, the beggars ran away, 
and Irene Adler, who was standing at the entrance of her house now, waited and asked if the clergyman was okay. A few people who had gathered around Sherlock told Irene that he was badly injured and asked if they could bring him inside since he had risked his life to protect her. Miss Adler agreed and allowed them to take Sherlock inside. As they took Holmes inside, Dr. Watson positioned himself outside the window. Watson watched Holmes acting as if he needed some fresh air, and when a maid opened the window, he signaled for Watson to throw the smoke grenade into the room. The moment Watson shouted fire, a few people outside also joined in and created a chaotic scene. Watson observed the commotion and after a few moments heard Sherlock screaming from inside that it was a false alarm and they should not panic. When the two friends reunited, Holmes complimented Watson on his flawless execution and told him that he knew where the photograph was. He explained that it was only logical to assume that Miss Adler would rush toward her most precious possession if she thought that her house was burning down. So during the commotion, Sherlock saw her bringing the photo out of a sliding panel behind the building in her living room and putting it back in its place upon hearing Sherlock's voice that there was no fire and it was all a false alarm. Sherlock then told Watson that their mission is practically finished and he intended to send a telegraph for the king to join them tomorrow and go to Miss Adler's house. Holmes said that while waiting for the lady to come into the living room to visit them, they will retrieve the photo and leave, which must give the king a great satisfaction to find the picture with his own hands. When they arrived outside Sherlock's apartment at Baker Street, and when he was looking for his key to open the door, someone passed by him and said, Good night, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock was stunned for a moment and told Watson that he had heard that voice before, but wondered whose voice that was. The next morning, the King of Bohemia came rushing into Sherlock's apartment and excitedly asked if Holmes had the photograph. Holmes responded that he didn't have the photograph, but he had hopes of obtaining it. Then the three men went back to Miss Adler's house in the king's carriage. When they arrived at Bryony Lodge, a maid opened the door and asked Sherlock if he was Mr. Holmes. Sherlock, stunned by the servant's knowledge of his identity, asked if he could meet with her lady. The maid informed them that Miss Adler had left with her husband that morning for the continent and would never return. Hearing that, Holmes rushed into the living room and when he removed the partition, he found a single photograph of Irene with a letter which was addressed to him and dated the previous night. In the letter, Miss Adler confessed that Sherlock had managed to completely fool her with his plan and she had been warned that if the king wanted to hire a detective as his last resort, he would certainly go to Sherlock Holmes. The letter then stated that on the day that Sherlock had disguised himself as a priest, she had his suspicion, but she found it hard to believe that the kind-looking priest who had gone out of his way to defend her could have been a detective in disguise. But the moment that she had revealed the location of the photo to save it from the fire, she had realized that she had betrayed herself. The letter continued that being an actress, Irene was skilled in wearing male costumes, which allowed her to follow Sherlock to his home undetected. Then she went back to her husband and they both agreed that in the face of enemies as powerful as the King of Bohemia and as smart as Sherlock Holmes, it was in their best interest to leave the country for good. As for the photograph, Irene had informed them in her letter that she would keep it as a weapon to keep herself safe from possible retaliations from the king, and despite the fact that she had been wronged, she would not publicize it as long as the king would not try to harm her. The last lines of the letter read that Irene had left a single photograph of herself for the king. After reading the letter, the king marveled at Irene's cleverness and wondered what a great queen she could have been if she was an aristocrat and could marry him. Sherlock, who was still stunned at being beaten by Miss Adler, apologized to the king for not being able to help him better and the king replied that he was completely satisfied with the turn of events since he knew Irene of being a woman of her word. He then slipped a very expensive emerald ring from his finger and offered it to Sherlock, but he refused and asked for Irene's photo as his reward. In the following years, Sherlock often marveled at the intelligence of Irene Adler and referred to the photograph as the woman. If you have been getting value out of this channel and you would like to support me in creating more content and adding more books to this channel, you can now become a member by clicking on the join button. 
You could also use Venmo or buy me a coffee directly from the links in the description box. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you in the next episode.